All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in lovely San Diego today as usual. And I'm joined by Evan Carmichael, who is in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Evan? I'm great, John. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. And Evan, in case you didn't know, is... is you know, not doing anything too major. He's just working to solve the world's biggest problem, and that's the untapped human potential. So you've set yourself quite a goal there, and I, I also saw you were looking to create uh, a billion entrepreneurs uh, in in the future. Uh, you know, Evan, you can is an author. He's been a, an entrepreneur himself since from a very young age, and uh, and now uh, has one of the at the top actually uh entrepreneur youtube channel with over a million subscribers right thank you for the love it's, it, it's great yeah. being here man i should have you introduce me everywhere i go it's great <laughs> <laughs> so what we wanted to talk about today is one of the one of the subjects that evan often talks about and that is the subject of self-awareness and one that i'm particularly interested in because uh, developing any level of self-awareness is not an easy task for most people and certainly when you either don't have self, any level of self-awareness or other people around you don't have any level of self-awareness, it makes uh, interacting, it makes work difficult sometimes, it makes personal uh, interaction difficult. It raises a lot of, a lot of um, obstacles, but I think it's something that's not well understood. So maybe Evan, we just start off by giving uh, your definition of self-awareness and why you believe it to be so critical. So I start from the place of, I believe that humans are built to serve. Mm -hmm. I think if you're not happy in life, it's because you're not serving and, and either serve the world, you know, us, we want to serve the world. It's why you have the show. It's why I do what I do. We want to have a big impact. Uh, some people are built to serve the, the 25 closest people to them, but you're built to serve. So that, that's already a starting point. Uh, next, I think everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something. You, you are the best in the world at something but people haven't either either one don't believe that they are or two mm -hmm. they haven't found the thing that they can be great at and so that's where self-awareness comes into play you know do you actually think that you have michael jordan level talent at something and have you found it and believe in yourself enough to go chase it down in terms of the process of doing it i go through a three-step process that i call uh who i how so we start with who who is your one word most important core value? So, so John, if you have to pick your most important core value as a human being, what would it be? Ooh, uh, I would say probably honesty. That's what honesty. I, yeah. Great. I love it. And listen, I've asked that question to so many people. It's, it's a variety of answers that come back, but it's always positive. Nobody's mm -hmm. most important core value has ever been hate. <laughs> or war yeah. or negative negativity or right it's always we want to be good people are good mm -hmm. and and you came up with an answer pretty quickly some people take a long time to come up with something but yeah. and by the way and by, and by the way you know when i say you know honest i'm just saying that yeah and that's not always it and that's not that doesn't always endear you to the world <laughs> sure but but even that, that's the first level of self-awareness. I think core value is your first level of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. It's who I how, so that's your who. Even just knowing that for your audience, even just knowing that is amazing value because that never goes away. When you're 75 years old, you're still gonna care about honesty. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna disappear, sure. right? It's gonna be with you forever. And just knowing that now changes how you might hire somebody, how you might look for a business partner, right? Somebody who is honest. Now, honesty is important for everybody, but for you, it's extra important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to hire a dishonest employee, but I could probably handle somebody who's skirting the line a little bit, but for you, it's like, no. Yeah. And so even, even leading uh, a job, if you're trying to hire somebody, leading a job ad with, I'm looking for a video editor who believes in honesty. Mm -hmm. attracting the right people into your yeah, company, yeah. right? Absolutely. So when you figure out your one word, your most important core value, your who, it forces a light onto your life to start looking in the mirror and saying, okay, if you are not happy, it's because there's a lot of dishonesty around you. 
Mm -hmm. and, and this is for everybody listening. Ask yourself that question. What is your most important core value? Mine is belief. So if I'm ever unhappy, there's a lack of belief happening around me, either in myself right. or with the people that, are, that I'm surrounding myself with. And that needs to change. Mm -hmm. But now you know how to change. A lot of people are stuck in frustration mode, but they don't know why. This is the starting point, figuring out your most important core value. Right. And by the way, so how do you encourage people to do that? Because that, as you say, I mean, I could ask that question now to 10 people and you know, maybe one or two might immediately be able to come back with an answer. But I think a lot of people would be kind of stuck because it's not something that they really contemplated. Yeah, it's not something that we ask, right? What are, what are the conversations that we have? It's like, why are you <laughs> listening to this, this show, this podcast? Because you want to get more knowledge, right? Um, the way that I usually break it down with people is I ask them a bunch of questions about their past. So mm -hmm. I'll ask them, uh, what's their favorite movie of all time and why? What lesson did you learn from your parents that you value the most? Uh, it, for your kids growing up, or if you have kids, you plan to have kids, if you could tell them one thing, what would you tell them? Uh, your favorite teacher of all time, who was it and why? It wasn't because Mrs. Jones taught you grade eight math. Right? There yeah. was something about her that made you a better human. Mm -hmm. And so chances are, if I, if I picked at you with those questions, honesty would be the similar theme throughout. Right? And so that's what I ask people. And then I ask them to tell me why. And, and I don't, I'm not, I mean, I'm not the judge. It's up to you. Right? I'm just trying to pull it out from different people. But then you see that common theme between all the things that make you come alive, all the things that you love the most in your past, all have that common thread that when you can identify what it is, now looking forward, you can create a life and a business for the entrepreneurs out there with a lot more intention. Right. You'll naturally gravitate towards people who believe in honesty just because that's the, that's the energy you're putting out. But there's a difference between just reacting to what's coming at you and proactively putting that out into the world. Where mm -hmm. if you say, I want to bring people on who are honest, a lot of people will look at that. If you made that job ad, I want, yeah. a, I want a video editor who believes in honesty. A lot of people will laugh at that job ad. They'll say, yeah. this is the stupidest job ad I've ever seen in my life. Who's laughing? The people who you don't want in your company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, let them self-eliminate right away. Exactly. And then the person who looks at that and say, holy cow, finally. I love this guy. They're going to work harder to try to work for you. They're going to work harder on the resume and cover letter in, in a, you know, whatever they need to do for the job ad, for the interview, they're going to prepare a lot more. And so uh, there's, a, there's a big difference between just being reactionary and proactively mm -hmm. putting that out into the world. And once you figure out what your who is, your, your most important core value, it allows you to live a life with a lot more purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's the starting and then, point. Like, so that's the starting life. point. So, yeah, so what's the next step in your process? The next is the why. So who, why, how, who is your, your core value? Why is your purpose? People say, well, what's my purpose? How do I find my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Your purpose comes from your pain. Whatever the most painful moment was of your life, your purpose is to help other people not struggle as much as you did. That will never get old. Right. So for me, I struggled so much as an entrepreneur it was the worst day of my life when I, when I quit on my business partner when I was 19, 20 years old. Right. I felt worthless as a human being. And I'm talking emotional pain, not physical pain. Sure, not sure, like sure. you broke your arm or something, right? Emotional pain. When did you feel the most worthless as a human being? There's a lot of people who are currently feeling the same way that you felt. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is to help those people. Right. Your purpose so, comes from your pain. So to, to do that, then, obviously, you have to do some reflection. You have to go and uh, find what that was. I um, mean, it's probably there, but we're very good, aren't we, a lot of the times at burying these things or avoiding going there because we don't want to relive that moment or that pain. Yeah. So on our journey to self-awareness, obviously, that is something we have to go and find that and confront it and embrace it and, and realize that that's going to actually help propel us forward. Yeah, this is especially difficult for entrepreneurs because we're often positive and optimistic and we see the future and it's always brighter and we don't want to think about this nasty stuff that happened to us before, right? That's not how the entrepreneur mind typically works. Uh, and the point isn't to live there. The point isn't to just sit in these negative emotions. 
The sure. point is to use that to then create a powerful force for good. And so it, I just ask yourself that question. What is the most painful moment of my life? What did I suffer through that I want to make sure nobody else has to go through? That if my kids, you know, I want to make sure they never have to deal with it. Even my worst enemy, I would never wish this upon them, right? What is that moment in your life? There's a lot of people who are currently living that right now and you can help them. And yeah. that also will never get old. I'll love yeah. helping entrepreneurs for the rest of my life because I struggled so much being yeah. one at the beginning. And so now you combine your who with your why, right? So I believe I could believe in anybody. That's, that's my most important core value. But entrepreneurs are special because mm -hmm. that's where I came from. That's my pain point. So right. I believe in entrepreneurs and I've got my who and my why and those things will never get old, right? So that's, that's, those are two great exercises in self-awareness because once you figure it out, it's set for life. Yeah. The last part is the how. Sorry, did you want to say something on that? No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. So who I have, the last part is the how. How you got out of the pain and suffering that you went through is not just some random fluke. It's yes. actually a recipe that you can teach other people. So for and, me, I struggle. And I was going to say, that's, that's an intro. Yeah. I just want to underline that point uh, yeah. for everybody because that's a really, really powerful point because... And, and I do, and I have, I've had this conversation with many people in the past about your journey in your journeys in life. And too many people think that they're, that the events are, are random or they're, you know, they're just things that happened. I went this way and that didn't work. And then I went over here instead of seeing it as something that you can, as you say, you can learn from and you can teach other people. Cause I even have done that when I finally took a step back and said, Oh, this happened. I went there. That didn't work out but it took me to here. And then from there, I went to there. And I've been able to say to people, uh, you know, the, you, sometimes you have to take chances and do things. And if they don't lead to a destination, that's okay, because sometimes they just lead to another path, to another path, to a destination. Yeah. And so I think that the way that you got out, you can teach to other people. Mm -hmm. and, and it may be, the, may be helpful for them, it may not be, but it's, it's not just unique to you. Right. And so for me, I struggled as an entrepreneur. I quit on my business partner. The thing that saved me was I asked myself, who's done this before? I mean, I'm sitting here struggling and not making any money and I'm, it's just not working out. Who has built a software company before? Maybe I can learn something. I'm trying to come up with everything myself. Uh, and the first person I thought of was Bill Gates because he built Microsoft and that was sure. top, of, top of mind for me. And I looked at how he built this company. I copied it. And, and, and my company started to grow. Partnerships was a strategy. And so now what have I done? If for anybody who follows my YouTube channel or any of my work, I love modeling success. I love showcasing different successful people while you can learn from them. Why? Because that's how I saved myself in my first business. And so for the past 20 years, it's all I've been doing is teaching people how they can model success as well. Right. Because it worked for me. Now the how can evolve and can change, right? So I have a YouTube channel now. Maybe that evolves in 10 years to, to being a VR Evan coming into your living yeah. room, you know, or hologram Evan beaming, you know, across <laughs> the planet, right? The how will change. The who and the why stays constant forever. I'm gonna believe in entrepreneurs for the rest of my life. How I go about doing it can change with technology, with markets, with interest. So how do you help people? Because it's often, yes, and I 100% agree with you about you, you can learn so much from other people and, and, you know, it's modeled for you. But then how do you help people who say, well, Evan, yeah, but I understand how you did it or I understand how they did it, but I, I'm not the same as you. I can't do it that way or that was your circumstances. How do you help people realize that uh, they can follow a model say like you did with microsoft it doesn't make you microsoft it doesn't make you bill gates it makes if you're still you you're just using the strategies and they can work for they can be adapted and work for you it's understanding what is the limiting belief behind that statement mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways that that could go you know yeah. i was i was talking to a woman i was coaching her the other day and she wants to be in the food business as an entrepreneur. And she's trying to do it for the past 20 years, start and stop and start and stop and has convinced herself that she's, it's just not meant for her, but it keeps popping up in her life. Right. It, it's like something, why? Something's happening here. Like you want to do this. <laughs> the, the lesson is keep coming. It's going to keep showing itself until you listen. 
and, and it came down to her mom was a, was a successful entrepreneur who only valued money, but was never home. And right. so she doesn't want to be like her mom. Mm -hmm. that and was so that's, fear. yeah. And so that's, uh, and so that ties in obviously is as part of the, the self-awareness journey is understanding what your limiting beliefs are and what is holding you back. And I guess the other thing at the end of the day is, is asking yourself, is, uh, is this really what you want to do? And if you're going to do it, are you prepared to do it? I mean, are you prepared to go all in on it? Or, because I, I find this sometimes, I think there's a lot of pressure on people uh, and they think they have to be successful, right? And most people want to be successful, but some people feel they have to be successful. And I sometimes wonder about, uh, it's okay if you don't want to get, get to that level. It's just you have to be able to uh, reconcile that and admit that that's a, you're okay where you are, that you don't want to make it to the next level or whatever. Yeah, I think balance is a very personal question. Yeah. What does balance look like for you versus me versus your audience? It's a personal question. I think we're too often judging our version of balance against somebody else's. We're comparing ourselves and say, well, they're so much better than me, but they have a different version. So I look at rock, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> uh, and he has to work out for yeah. four hours a day. He Crazy. sleeps, he sleeps, I think it's, uh, I think he sleeps four hours at night and then he goes. So he has to do cardio twice a day and, and uh, waits twice a day. And when he's on a movie set, he'll wake up five hours before his call time so he can work out for four hours and then go and, and shoot his movie. I think that's crazy. I don't look like The Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But, but yeah. for him, that's balance. Mm -hmm. You know, if you hear him talking about him being in the gym, it's a different world. Like he needs that. If he's not in the gym every day, he's a different person. And mm -hmm. so it's easy to say, well, I want to work out and be more fit. I want to be like the rock. Oh, but I can't work out four hours a day. I have a different version of balance than he does. And, and as is you and everybody listening. So it's figuring that out for yourself and then not being so insecure when you see somebody else winning at one of those elements. Yeah. And I think that's one of the key points there is this, we live in a, we live in a very strange culture today uh, uh, where I call it, you know, the, uh, the comparison culture, because we have all these social media snapshots bombarding us constantly. And it's very easy to fall into the trap that you just said is like, Oh, look at they, their life looks fantastic compared to mine when really you're just looking at snapshots in time. But, we're, we fall into this trap of constant comparison and it's really, it, it, it's very self, it's very self defeating and it's very false in many ways too. So I think comparison has a good and a bad side. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I think comparison is actually helpful when you use it to kick yourself forward. Mm -hmm. Most people will see somebody else and then kick themselves down. Yeah. yeah. I, so I love Les Brown as an example. Uh, as a speaker, young Les Brown for me is the greatest speaker of all time. Uh, you know, we may have our own opinions on it, but I love young Les Brown. I look at that, him speaking, and I say, that's what's possible. Like that is what a human can do. And that's an inspiring kick forward for me. Mm -hmm. Most people look at that and say, well, I can never be that good. And they kick themselves down. So I want to kick forward instead of kick down. But the, the key point is here, you need a kick. Yeah. Because without the kick, you stay where you are. Without comparison, without knowing what's possible, without seeing, when you see somebody else do it, for a lot of people, that's enough motivation to say, oh, I can do it too. And that's a kick. Just making sure we're kicking ourselves forward instead of down. Yeah, no, I think, that's a, I think that's a really good point. And unfortunately, as you say, I think people use comparison. I think it's, you know, people can look at a, somebody who's really highly successful and say, oh, I'd like to be like that. Uh, but then they look at people around them who they consider maybe on a par with them who are doing slightly better. And then they let that overwhelm them and kick them back. It's almost like there's, they use two different comparisons and the one that's closer to them tends to be a negative one. Yeah. I think we live mostly in the land of, land of negative comparisons. And I think it's honestly based out of not having enough self-love. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for it from somewhere else.
And so, and so, um, you know, to round out the conversation about um, self-awareness, because you just touched on, on self-love. So uh, becoming self-aware is not, is not a journey to self-loathing. It's a journey to self-love, right? And I think, but you have to be able to confront you know, your, your strengths, your weaknesses, maybe things, uh, maybe things that you have to change uh, about yourself. And that's, that's another interesting one I would say when people go, oh, well, that's just me. And I always go, well, is it? And is that really the best version of you? And is that who you really want to be? So it's okay to change some things about. So how do, so how do you help people through this process of self-awareness without them getting too deep into you know, the negative sides and realizing that self-awareness is a journey to self-love really at the end of the day? So we start with the who, I, how process that we already went through. And then invariably there's well, that's difficult. You know, yeah. like to do that is going to be a big challenge. And I believe that you want to do challenging things. Mm -hmm. This is where I start to watch the language. Self-love comes from doing difficult things and tying your self-esteem to the effort instead of the result. If you only tie your self-love, your self-esteem, your self-respect to winning, then you'll only do things that you have a high degree of winning at. Right. And thus you play small for the rest of your life. If you tie your self-esteem, self-love, self-respect to trying to put in your best effort out every day, then you'll accomplish amazing things. And so I want to catch the language. When somebody says, well, that's difficult, that's hard, that's scary. Awesome. Yeah. You, you, you do scary. You do hard. Because what's the opposite? Comfort. Yeah. Boring photocopy your life every day. The thing that you're in right now that you hate is because you're not doing anything scary or difficult. If there's nothing scary in your calendar in the next month, in your calendar written down, you hate your life. <laughs> yeah, because you're no, just doing the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah, you need absolutely. to. So, so paying attention in language to when you say scary or difficult or hard, that's, that's go time. That means you have to go do it. Mm -hmm. Or, or for people who, who feel more like when your heart's beating because you're nervous, yeah. boom, 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 go time. That's yeah. a signal to go, right? Now, don't do something stupid like jump out of an airplane with no parachute, right? Yeah. Mo most of our fears are not of failing. They're of failing in front of other people. Yeah, yeah. And so when you feel this, boom, 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 you go. And yeah. that's how you build self-love. Your goals do not count until they're hard. Yeah, no, I, I'm 100%, Evan, this has been fantastic. And I hope people have taken something away from it. I personally have. Uh, this has been a, a, a wonderful um, interview. So I would really encourage people, the journey to self-awareness is probably one of the greatest journeys you'll ever take. It's one of the most rewarding journeys you'll ever take. And um, I've done some of it, I've done it myself. And to be honest, I wish I had done it back when I was 19, as opposed to a little bit later. <laughs> So listen, thanks, Evan. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, or CRM. Before we go, Evan, can, uh, if you'd like to tell people a little bit more about how they can follow you and get in contact with you. Sure. And, and I appreciate the love. How many episodes deep are you on this, John? On uh, Sales Pop itself? Oh, no, uh, uh, oh, about 300. 300. Okay, guys. If if you're listening to John, he's been putting in a crazy ton of work. It's not easy booking these things. It's not easy setting them up and doing the research and asking great questions. It's a lot of work. So the best thing you can do for me is actually just go help John. If you've liked this episode or any of the episodes that he's done before, what's the best thing? Go leave a review on iTunes. What do you want people to do? Yeah, leave a review on iTunes or on YouTube or just subscribe to Sales Pop. Yeah, it'd be great. Le leave, a, leave a good review on iTunes, leave a comment on YouTube. It may be not what you typically do. It may require an extra step that you gotta go to your phone and log into YouTube. John's putting in an insane amount of work to make 300 shows happen. That is not, that doesn't just happen by accident. So, so spend you know, two minutes to give a little bit extra love. John and I would both appreciate it. Yeah, listen, I, I really appreciate that, that, Evan. And obviously, it's the guests that make the show and this has been a, a fantastic one and I highly recommend you look at Evan's book and, uh, and check out Evan's YouTube channel. So listen, thanks again. Great interview. See you all for another expert inside interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.